Hey buddy, welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Vis. In this video, we're going to continue with our Houdini Unity level design tactics. So uh, we're gonna make a quick little rip off of the first level or the first dungeon from the original Legend of Zelda game for Nintendo. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos. Now, without any further ado, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and what I've done is created a uh, blank 90 by 90, or is it 91? It's 91 by 91 image. And here's where we're gonna draw the map for our level. So I went ahead online and found this nice little map here of the first dungeon for Zelda 1 uh, from nesmaps.com, and so you can see it's pretty simple to do. It's a, it's a nice grid. Um, so what I did is I counted the blocks here, the bricks that you can step on. So we have 12 across and seven down, right? And so I wanna recreate that area with seven pixels down and 12 pixels across. Uh, but I'm also going to add one to each one of these corners because the wall needs to be outside of this walkable area, right? So it'll be what, uh, 12 plus 14 across and nine up and down. So I went ahead in Photoshop and I recreated this to the best of my abilities, right? So I, let me shrink this down. And as you can see down here, set this to always on top. Always on top, all right. So we, so now when I turn this on, you can see that I went ahead and recreated uh, the layout just using different colored pixels. So for the area that we can't, the way we've been doing this in my other videos, we only use two colors, right? Black and white. Um, and the white areas determined walls where the black areas determined where you could walk. I believe that's how we were doing it. We're going to do a little bit different this time. We're going to use more colors because we can. Uh, so in this one, I'm going to do the black is just uh, unused, right? We're not we're not going to worry about the black stuff um, here. So uh, we one of the things I found about using this technique is that the image needs to be a square. For some reason, if it's odd shaped, it gets distorted. So even though we have all this empty space at the top and here at the bottom, uh, we gotta make sure to keep it a square. Uh, I think it has to do something with the way it does grids by default. So um, so as you can see, I just did the outline here in white and that connects each room. I know that uh, some of these doors here in this game are exploding walls or whatever and you have to explode. We're not gonna worry about doors and stuff like that. We're just gonna connect all these rooms. And then also, since it's an uh, even number across, as opposed to an odd number, you can see that the doors going from side to side are just one pixel, but the ones going up and down are two pixels. And that's just to keep everything centered. Uh, you don't have to do it that way, but that's, uh, that's just how they did it. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And then, uh, so the black is unused, the white is the walls, and then you can see that the inside is filled in this bluish color. Uh, so we'll be able to isolate the colors inside of Houdini and tell it to do different things for the colors So that's that and as you can see it's just the the floor layout. There's none of the uh, None of the accoutrements or props that go in each room, but I am using those as well I've made another layer here called D1 blocks uh, It should probably be called D1 props, but uh, if I turn that on you'll see that the background disappears. Um, and that's because we need to adhere to the same principle, right? Anything that's not being used needs to be filled in black. The image needs to be a grid, the same, a square, just like the other one. It needs to be the exact same size because it's literally overlaid on top of the other one. So in this one, you can see I'm using a bunch of different colors here, right? Uh, movable blocks are white or yellow, sorry. Uh, the water is, of course, blue. Regular blocks are red. 
and uh, those weird blocks that they have here they've got oops what was that they've got these uh, these odd looking blocks down here that have like little faces or whatever so that's that's being represented in my map they're also they're here and they're also at the end of the level here uh, spoilers um, so I don't know what those are supposed to be but uh, I'm representing those as green so that's what these green ones up here are and that's what these green ones down here are so red is bricks green is the weird bricks yellow is movable bricks and blue is water so now that we have these two images created now we can make another layer right and we can add uh, where all the enemies are going to be if we wanted to but we're not going to do that today we're going to try and keep this as simple as possible just the level design and maybe some basic props so we'll go ahead and remember that the first step we need to do once we're done with the image is flip it right we need to flip it over because everything happens flipped for some reason in houdini i'm not sure why that's happening yet so we'll come over here to image rotation and flip everything backwards make sure that our background is the same okay so now we just need to save this as a ping file so i will export this to my desktop and call it d1map.png and then I'll turn on the top layer and also save that one as d1props.png. Cool. And then we're done inside of Photoshop. And now in Houdini, let's just go ahead and get started with our building of the level or of the HDA. So first, of course, we drop in a geo and jump into that. And then we're gonna need uh, the standard, we've done this a few times now, right? The WFC initialize grid. WFC initialize grid, part of the labs tools, link in the descriptions. And we'll put that down, right? Now let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Okay, so here we wanna link to that image, <laughs> link to that image that has the background. So we'll find our desktop and we will find that D map, D1 map, and there it is. So uh, one of the things you gotta pay attention to is uh, Unity has Z facing backwards, basically, um, or towards the back. And Houdini, uh, by default here, has it facing towards the front, so that's why everything's upside down. You see down here, X is going to the right, Y is going up, and Z is going forward. So we just need to, uh, you know, rotate the camera a little bit so that we are looking at this right. Okay. And now you can see that X is uh, to the left, Y is up, and Z is back. So here we go. It looks like it's supposed to. It's been flipped around for us like we expected. So we can go ahead and proceed. What is next in our list? Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is different from all the other ones. There's this cool little node called partition, and that's gonna let us isolate the colors. So we'll go ahead and drop in a partition node. Okay, and we gotta put a little formula in here. I'll go ahead and zoom this out a little bit so you can see what I'm gonna type. Basically, we're gonna create um, a rule based on the colors so it's going to isolate all the colors and it's going to create groups for them so don't uh, freak out what I'm about to type I will explain it here in a second okay so here's what we're gonna do this is defining how we're gonna name our our, our groups so uh, I'm putting in CD here this isn't this isn't uh, too much code uh, this is the, t the letter CD is just string. It's just what I'm gonna call the, the group. It's gonna start with the, with the letter CD. Then we're gonna put a plus, that's gonna append the string that's coming up next. And then we have this thing here, this this back tick, right? This isn't uh, apostrophe. This is that, that weird tick on the left side of most keyboards. Uh, so th what that basically says is we're going to use some VEX code inside of this area. So. We can close this whole thing in those two ticks, 
and everything inside of that is actual code that's being rendered. So we've got a method called rint, and what that's going to do is it's gonna turn a number into an integer, right? What we're, what we're doing here is we're going to get the color red, so this at cd.r is plucking out the red portion of color, our, our color attributes. So it's, it's getting that, and it's a number, it's a float. Um, so what this method is doing, this rint, is it's turning it into an integer, right? Because the color might be, uh, in, in Houdini, the, the standard is um, the red, blue, and green uh, are represented in a, in a value from zero to one, right? So um, a mid-hue red might be 0 0.5. Okay, or a uh, slightly redder red would be 0 0.758327 or some random number like that. And so we don't want those big numbers because that's gonna really like make our, our group names ridiculous. So this rint is only gonna turn it into an integer. So if it says it's 0 point something, it's gonna round it up or round it down to make it an integer um, instead of uh, something crazy. So inside of that like i said we're grabbing the red and then we are multiplying it like i said it's also a value from zero to one so we're multiplying it times 255 because that's what most of us are used to colors being if you're working in photoshop you know uh, the red the green and the blue are represented as values from zero to 255 so we're converting it we're multiplying whatever the value is times 255 just so that we can compare it to Photoshop and say, okay, yeah, that's what the, the blue one looks like or whatever. Um, so we're doing that once, right? We're getting the value for red. We're multiplying it times 255 and we're turning it into an integer, right? So it's gonna be a whole number from zero to 255. And then we end that tick to say that this is the end of that code area. And then we're just adding uh, an underscore um, to the to the name there and then we do the same thing again our the a tick our int cd dot g this time we're doing the green color times 255 and the tick put an underscore in there another tick our int and then we do the blue cd dot b times 255 and so what that's going to do is it's going to create groups based on any colors we're using and um, then we can handle those 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 groups later by which color it is so now that we're in here let's see if that shows up in our geometry no not yet so we will go down to the next one the next thing we're going to need is the standard wang tiles decoder okay and Let's see, where is our group? I missed a step here. Um, our groups aren't showing up because I forgot to set the entity to points, right? We're interested in the color of our points, not any primitives. We don't have any primitives. We've loaded in an image. It's made up of points. So if we pick this, we will be happier. So let's see if that shows up here now. Yes, you can see up here, there's a bunch of new groups. Uh, and we'll deal with those here in a second. So we'll go into our Wang Tile Decoder and let's go back to our scene view here. So now you can see everything's been filled in white. That's not very helpful. Let's go ahead and mark Keep Color so that we can see what is going on here. All right. And you can see all this black area here. That's what I talked about before. We wanna go ahead and get rid of that. We don't wanna instance things where nothing is being used. So we will go ahead and add in a blast group or a blast node. Oh, a very important thing here. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but the Wang tile decoder needs to be the same size as the image. I almost let that go away. But you can see here the rows and columns are set to 20 and our image is 91 by 91. That's very important. So I've set that to 91 by 91. I clicked on keep color. And now we're ready to go to the next one. And what we're going to do is we're going to blast away all these uh, empty spaces. So we'll drop in a blast node. Okay, and here's where the, that group thing comes in, right? Now we can go ahead and select 
the group that is all the empty spaces. So if we come over here, you can see we've got now three groups and they're named according to that rule I created, right? So it says CD underscore zero underscore zero underscore zero. That means that it is the CD thing that we called it. The red is zero, the green is zero, and the blue is zero. So zero, 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 as we know, is black. Um, and then this one is 072, 255. So that's probably our blue, right? Because it's a weird blue. It's not, it's not just blue, it would, it, other, otherwise that would be 00, 255. But it's blue with a little bit of green. So it's got 72 green and 255 blue. So that is our blue. And then uh, of course CD 255, 255, 255 is white. So let's go ahead and pick our 000, 000 group. And as you can see, uh, all that empty space is now gone. We are only using the the actual uh, layout of the map instead of creating uh, area where there's nothing that needs to be there. All right, so what comes next? We've got to bring in a copy to points as we've done before. And it is wired up wrong. So let me cut this and plug this into the right side. And then what's on the left side, we all know this, it's the Wang tile samples. All right, that's gonna get us our shapes for this. And then we uh, go into our copy to points and we wanna do what we've always done. We wanna turn on this piece attribute and change it to name. And then we want to make sure to turn on pack and instance. That way we are creating uh, only the instances instead of uh, creating copies of everything. So as you can see right off the bat here, we've got some, the level, the floor plan is working out just as we expect, right? So now we already have a area that we can navigate through. Cool. So that's all for the copy to points. Uh, now, what we're gonna do is also a little different than how we've normally done it. I got this nice tip online, thanks James, uh, about saving some time when writing uh, the next step. Now, if you remember last time in uh, Unity, now I have a, a brand new Unity project here. I've added a uh, game creator to make things easier, and I've added my own asset pack, which I created uh, and mentioned last time and it's still named the same way so I have all these models uh, or prefabs that are numbered after the Wang tiles that we've discussed in the other videos. So instead of uh, renaming uh, or, or entering all these names manually, uh, James was able to give me a uh, nice little tip on how to do this. So if we look at the geometry here it's going to tell us the name of all of the different Wang tiles that we're using to make up this level. So as you can see, we're using 255 and 31 and 241. So in my last video, I had you uh, do some manual uh, copying of these names. So uh, he told me this cool little trick and I can't believe uh, I didn't even think of it. So we're gonna add an attribute wrangle. It's a little bit of code, but nothing too scary. So let's go ahead and tab and do a wrangle. We'll do an attribute wrangle, shift enter. All right, so we're just gonna write a simple expression here um, because that is nothing too complicated and I will explain it uh, once I've written it in. All right, so as you can see, we are um, basically creating an attribute um, so it's gonna be a string attribute and it's gonna be called unity instance because we need that to instantiate unity objects. Uh, and then we're passing it the path, right? So it's a string and we know that our, our prefabs are in assets, viz, p, and then they're named the number, right? So we're doing a plus at name because there's already, oops, there's already an attribute called name that has that number for us. So we're just adding this as a string. So it's gonna be assets slash viz slash p slash and then whatever that name is, which is gonna be a number, so like 255. Uh, and then we're appending more string at the end there going dot prefab. So in the end, this unity instance is going to have a path to my prefab. 
So if we look into our geometry spreadsheet here, you can see right there, it completes that for us. So it says assets viz p0.prefab. We scroll down, you can see assets viz p.112.prefab. That saves us a lot of time. Uh, if we change our image, we don't have to do anything where before we had to go ahead and punch in those numbers again. Um, this is a really cool time saver. Thanks again, James, you're great. Um, so uh, now we're done with our map, right? This is gonna generate the prefabs for us uh, or it's gonna pull the prefabs for us in uh, Unity. So we can go ahead and dump this out, but I'm not quite ready to do that just yet. So I'm gonna dump in a merge because we need to do this again and uh, pull in our props. So I'll drop in a merge here. Okay, and this is gonna be our middle ground. And then, uh, as I discussed last time, we wanna get rid of any extra geometry. So I'm gonna close this out at the end here with a dissolve. And as you can see, it gets rid of everything, which is not what we want. So we go back over here and remove unused points. And that's going to get rid of uh, any extra uh, information in the other tabs here. So I explained that in the other video. So let's go and uh, move this stuff aside. We can actually put this in a node here uh, and just collapse it for now. We'll just call this map. and move it to the side here. And we're gonna do a lot of the same stuff, right? So uh, we're gonna be repeating most of this. So let's go ahead and let's keep that open. Let's just, let's just copy some stuff. So we're gonna need the same stuff. We're gonna need this, uh, the Wang, the WFC initializer. We're gonna need the partition. We're gonna need the Wang decoder. We're gonna need the blast. Um, and that's that's all we're gonna need from here. So let's go ahead and select these and then just alt drag to pull them out And we can close this and move it out of the way So our WFC initializer is pointing to the map. We need to change that So we will go here and find the props file DL props D1 props All right, everything else stays the same. It's from texture the partitions are going to stay the same. We want to create groups for all the colors in there. We want to go to the Wang decoder, make sure that it's at the same resolution as the image, 9191. We want to keep the color. And then we want to get rid of all the empty spaces. So if we go ahead and highlight this, there you can see we have all of our colors, except for the ones we're not using. So there's the yellows, there's the reds, the greens, the blues. Cool. Now that we're done with that, here's where the fun part comes in. Now we just need to create some attributes uh, like we did over here where we created the Unity instance. Now we, we need to pass in the names of our prefabs for these specific colors. So um, we'll go ahead and do that this time by adding an attribute create. All right. so. Uh, in this, we, we know we have groups. So this one has different groups, as you can see. We've got 000, which is black. We've got 00255, which is blue. We've got 02550, which is green. We've got 25500, which is red. And 252550, which is yellow. So uh, let's go ahead and pick one for the red zones. So the red ones are going to be 255 00. So we'll set that as the group. And then we want to create an attribute. And that attribute is going to be called Unity Instance. And it's going to be a type string. And here we will put in the path to whatever we want to use as the red stuff. So I have these cubes set up. So I'm going to punch that in. So I have uh, in my viz p folder, I have a prefab called zelda cube p dot prefab. So we'll put that in there and then we'll do the exact same thing. So I'll just uh, copy this one down. And this one, we're gonna target a different group. So we'll delete this one. 
And I'm gonna do the water as another one that I have set up. And we'll just stop at two. So the blue one would be this one here, 00255. And Unity Instance stays the same. And then the prefab has a different name. It is called Zelda Water. All right, we're getting right along. So that's pretty much it. Right now we merge this one into this one. And uh, we should have, as you can see, we've got our map with different colored dots there. I don't know if you can make that out. I can't from this angle. Where'd it go? There it is. They're on the same level, so uh, that's why it looks like that. So we'll go ahead and uh, create a digital asset out of this now. You can see there's red dots up here and the yellow dots and all that. So everything is as it should be. Make sure that the dissolve is the active thing there. And then we can go ahead and turn this into a digital asset. So we'll go up one. We'll rename this to something uh, better like Zelda D1. And then we right click on it, create digital asset. We get this little box telling, telling us to give it a name. Uh, we can leave it at that. And I'm gonna just save it in my project folder. So I have a folder here called new Unity project. I'll just throw that in my assets folder and hit accept. And we get this box, destroy spare parameters, apply accept. Okay. So now if we go into Unity, and uh, again, like I said, I, I've downloaded and installed the game creator library or package, which lets me uh, get up and running quickly as I've done in all my other videos. Um, I've also installed the Houdini engine, which we're going to need for accessing Houdini uh, digital assets. If you've watched along, you know exactly what's going on. So here's my Zelda digital asset. We can just drag and drop it, or we can load it from here and there you go you can see right away everything loaded up as it should or did it dun 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 now for some reason the wang tiles have a problem with the ground one uh, we covered this in a different video um, for some reason the, the tile that represents the solid empty ground is offset from the rest of them so we'll go back into houdini and we'll fix that real quick we'll do that here in the map area we already have this attribute wrangle now let me show you again just to make sure you understand what's going on so let's come back to this attribute wrangle and go to the geometry spreadsheet and if we if we look at the different assets Keep an eye on this this py right this is our vertical alignment for everything so, so most things are at 0 0.5 and if we scroll down we're going to see right here something is at 0 0.1 point 0, 0.01 uh, and so that's why that offsets happening most of our assets are sitting at 0 0.5 but for some reason the floor one 255 is sitting at 0 0.01 it's in a different place so we're just gonna set these all to zero, right? Because we don't have anything that needs to be flying. If you had any assets that were like, I don't know, uh, uh, painting on a wall or something, you wouldn't probably wanna put that at zero. But since this is all the ground, uh, we can go ahead and set these all to zero. And we'll do that right here in this attribute wrangle. Uh, we're just gonna do that really quickly here. I'm just gonna hit enter and I'm gonna type this in. Okay. So this is pretty simple stuff, right? This is, we have an attribute we're calling here called P dot Y, right? P is our position that has three values to it, X, Y, and Z. So we're saying everything in here, set it's P dot Y, it's vertical location or vertical, vertical position, set that to zero. So this is gonna reset all of them and make them zero. So as you can see right off the bat here, everything is now zero, 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 zero. So that's gonna fix everything for us. So now we can go ahead and save our digital asset again and go back into Unity and reload this. And just like that, our ground is where it's supposed to be. 
Now uh, let's go ahead and find our player wherever he is. No, all the way here. Uh, I made him uh, look like Zinc, so uh, Zinc Link. Let's reset him. Where is he now? Perfect. All right. Now something's wrong. You can see that uh, my water is created, but my my rocks, my bricks are not. So let's see if I used the wrong path or the wrong group. Okay, um, just so you know what the problem was, uh, I go back into Houdini here, did some exploring to find out what was going on. And it was that when I created this second attribute create, uh, I didn't tie it to the first one here. It automatically tied it to the blast above. So that was causing some issues. So I just had to cut that. Let's see if I can recreate that again. So if I click on this and copy it down here. Okay, let's space these out. So you can see right there, see how that's not attached to that line? I just did a, a clean up or a, a layout adjustment. See how it's attached to that blast above but not connected to the rest of the string here? That's exactly what happened last time, but I couldn't tell because it was lined up perfectly. So it looked like it was connected to the one above it, but it wasn't, it was just dangling by itself like this one is. So uh, that's how I fixed that. So make sure if you run into that problem, just check everything, make sure that they're uh, actually lined up together. And that uh, is how I updated that. And so now you can see uh, back in Unity, we've got our blocks. And if we play it now, I've got my, my little link guy here. And we've got, oh, it's, it's a little too small, don't you think? So let's go ahead and resize this to a two. That should be good enough. Two, two, two. Make it a little bit bigger. Find my link again. Yeah, that's that's a little better. So now you can see we've got those bricks where they belong. We've got the walls, our doors, and everything is as it should be. Now all you have to do is uh, make some better uh, models for the backgrounds and stuff, and you could make yourself a cool little. Zelda. Well, let's look at the water. So the water, now you might be saying, uh, this of course isn't gonna do anything to me. In reality, you would probably put a collider here so that you wouldn't be able to walk through it. Um, or you could also go back into your uh, map for the ground and just cut these holes out. That way when you fall here, you like actually fall through the floor. Um, so that's the, that's the fire. You can of course jump, which Link couldn't do. Um, but that's the uh, the water, sorry, not the fire. And then uh, let's go where the boss would be. He's in here. This would be that room where the uh, the hands would come and try to take you away. Uh, uh. And then this is where the boss would be on the right there. There'd be a dragon, and you beat him, and you get over here to the room with the weird walls. You can't walk through but this is where the Triforce would be. So uh, again, uh, we didn't do all of it. We didn't do those weird blocks. We didn't do the bad guys, but this should get you started in making a really cool uh, Zelda 3D version. And there you have it, quick and easy, I hope. Uh, we got a, a couple of hangups there with that weird node that kind of ghosted out. But uh, other than that, it went pretty smooth and I hope you found this video helpful and useful and learn something from it. Uh, if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can keep making these. And uh, thanks again for watching. I'm still Skid Viz. If you have any questions or if you would have done anything differently, please, please put it in the comments because I want to learn. Um, that one tip about using uh, the attribute wrangle that came from a comment. And if it weren't for that, I would still be doing it the hard way. So thanks again to everyone who does participate and join my Discord and talk to me about stuff and help me out. Um, also, I want to mention that the uh, that weird color grouping partition thing, uh, I learned that from Vero Mix. So thanks again to him 
uh, or thanks to him, I never said thanks here, but uh, thanks to him because that is very handy and uh, lets us do what we did. So we can use that, we can keep cloning this the way we did, the way we split up from doing the map to doing the props. You can do another level and just add like bad guys with the, with the other layer in Photoshop. Uh, and just keep changing colors and the red guys are this guy and the blue guys are this guy and the orange guys are these guys uh, and you can keep doing that and it's pretty cool uh, so uh, I hope you, like I said you found this helpful thanks again I'm still Skidviz peace out